Welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now let's go back, uh, actually just two years ago in history, the 2nd of August in 2019. It was on this day that a boy in India had 526 teeth removed, um, you know, in a medical operation. The doctors had to, of course, uh, count these, uh, take out time to count the teeth after uh, the surgery. He was found to have 526 uh, tooth inside his mouth. The seven-year-old boy had long complained of having a swollen and aching jaw. And surgeons at the, it's called the Savita Dental College and Hospital in, in Chennai, India, operated and found 526 teeth crammed inside his mouth. He had a well-defined bag-like mass extracted from his jaw, which weighed about seven ounces and contained hundreds of miniature teeth. Once it was removed, of course, they took out time and counted all of them, 526 of them. The hospital statement did not release the child's name, and of course, it was discharged three days later. Um, it, all, it also asserts uh, that it was the first ever case to be documented worldwide. And so, of course, there's really no, I don't think there's any proper explanation uh, as to why that will happen. The worst that we see is people say that they have six toes, you know, or six <laughs> fingers. You know, that's, that's the most that we see. Uh, nobody has ever had more teeth than you know than you know they they normally should. Five hundred and twenty-six. <laughs> I remember watching the video of the doctors taking time to actually count the number of teeth. They took about four hours to count, and they found five hundred and twenty-six teeth-like structures in the boy's mouth. You know, the story says that his parents had discovered that the son's. Um, you know, right jaw was swelling or right cheeks were swelling. And it seemed like symptoms of a decaying teeth. And they took him to the hospital. And when they eventually, you know, did the assessment, they saw that the doctor said that they didn't really need to, you know, drill into his mouth, but they were able to, you know, bring that out. And, you know, how they were able to explain it, that it was like a balloon filled with teeth-like structures. So it was like a sack in his yeah. mouth filled with teeth. I mean, that's amazing. So thank God they were able to remove that successfully. They didn't need to drill, so no construction was needed. And uh, doctors say the boy was expected to recover quickly. So yes, good no, one. No, one more will be too tough. <laughs> exactly right. No shaky, too hard. No shaky. <laughs> oh my. All right. Um, do you love Ed Sheeran's music? I absolutely do. Oh, what was your favorite from his album Divide? Castle on the Hill, Go Away Girl. Relax, okay. I don't know which album is Divide. <laughs> Um, well, but I, I know I, I love I love you know a lot of Ed Sheeran songs. Fantastic! You know, well, it, it right was on this day in history in 2019 that Ed Sheeran broke record. He broke the record today um, for the most. Ex I mean, let's let's take a look at this and let's take this very slowly, right? Today in history, singer songwriter Ed Sheeran's "Divided" tour became the most attended and highest grossing tour of all time. Now, so there was this band called U2. And he overtook the band um, as, you know, the highest uh, grossing tour, the most attended, after spending 893 days on the road. Um, quick facts for you regarding this tour. Ed Sheeran began this tour in March 2017. He spent 30 months on the tour, 893 days. He sold 8.9 million tickets. And... When we look at Ed Sheeran's uh, tour for Divide the Album and U2, um, we, we see that U2 actually had more, more um, people in attendance. For example, in U2's, um, the average audience per show was about 66,000. But Ed Sheeran's average attendance on a show was 34,000 people. You know? But the good thing for Ed Sheeran was that it was the volume of shows that gave him that edge. So he had a higher number of shows and more people were able to attend across the world. And so on this day in history, on this day in history, he made history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you have, it has to be, you know, in the record books because um, U2 is one of the biggest bands that ever existed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and Bono, you know, just by being lead singer of U2 has become um, a voice in the world that you cannot ignore. He's been everywhere. 
um, you two don't need to make music anymore in their lives, you know, and they would leave, their grandchildren would live and live very, very well. Mm -hmm. That's how big U2 is. So for a person to break a record, you know, um, of a, uh, um, grossing more money than U2 has, it is definitely outstanding. But like you mentioned, yes, the U2 would definitely have more crowd because they're, they're a way bigger band than the Sharon, you know, is. Um, so, but, but I think that also, I'm not sure what year the U2 tour was, I think something else is, you know, the fact that there's, there's, they've also over time been able to expand the ways of marketing these tours. Yes, that Ed Sheeran's album and that period in his career was massive for him across the world. He was maybe the biggest artist at that time. Um, but they've also been able to expand different, you know, ways with which they market these stores, make it easier for people to buy tickets, you know, not just online or on ground. You know, you can also get, you know, other ways or platforms which with you to get these tickets and fill up a stadium pretty easy. So he definitely, you know, you know, found himself in a better time. And at the same time, you know, found himself with better marketing, you know, than you two did. Um, but it is still a record that needs to be spoken about. Um, over and over and over. There's there's barely any bands bigger than U2. Maybe Copley is still not even bigger than U2. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. But U2, U2 and, and uh, Ed Sheeran, um, to totally different wavelengths. Ama uh, amazing record there, grossing $736 million. All right, that's what we have for you today on uh, Today in History. Let's take a break and begin with our first big conversation about the Nigerian police allegations um, against Abakari and reforms in the Nigerian police. <laughs> 